Apple just released its newest chips for their desktop Macs in the Mac Studio and Mac Pro. How powerful are these new chips, especially the very large M2 Ultra? And are they powerful enough to overtake Nvidia, AMD, and Intel? Let's get into it. Apple has just released its largest custom silicon in the M2 family of chips in the new M2 Ultra. Since Apple has moved to using its own custom silicon, I have been very curious as to how they were going to scale up their CPU and GPU cores to be competitive against the likes of Nvidia, AMD, and Intel. This channel is called I'm a Mac, but as I say, that is just half the story as I have an even longer history with PCs than I do with Macs. And one thing that I love to do is performance comparisons. With Apple Silicon Macs, the only comparisons you typically see are to old Intel-based Macs but it doesn't give you a good comparison to PC hardware. Since Apple announced a transition at WWDC in 2020, PC hardware performance has really improved. When the M1 launched and they rolled out larger and larger versions in the Pro and Max chips, I did comparisons to CPUs and GPUs on the PC. And I did that to get an understanding of the silicon power Apple is offering for the prices they charge. I followed that up with the launch of M2 and M2 Pro, and now at WWDC, we have the largest chips in the M2 Max and M2 Ultra just released for their desktop Max. Three years later, and a transition to Apple Silicon is now complete. For those who don't know, the M2 Ultra is just two M2 Max chips glued together. And I use that term jokingly as a means by which Intel has, in the past, described combining individual dies to create a new chip. Apple has found this an effective way to quickly scale from average desktop levels of performance to much higher levels of performance. And at WWDC 2023, Apple has once again stirred up people into a frenzy and got people excited for gaming on Apple Silicon Macs. And now that Nvidia has launched almost all of its GPUs for this generation, I was curious as to how the latest Apple Silicon compares in terms of performance. And I wanted to compare the last gen GPUs from Nvidia and add AMD to the comparison. The M2 Max comes in two configurations, one with 30 GPU cores and the other with 38 GPU cores. They both have the same CPU, which is 12 cores in total with 8 performance and 4 efficiency cores. The CPU scores just under 15,000 in Cinebench R23 and is comparable to a Ryzen 7 5800X or Intel's i5-13400. To quickly compare the performance of the GPUs and to understand the level of performance they have, the best method I've found is using 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme. It is a cross-platform benchmark that enables gaming performance comparisons. Let's start with the M2 Max, and for reference, I'll first place last-generation Apple Silicon in the M1 Max on the chart. The M1 Max with 24 GPU cores averaged 94 FPS, while the M1 Max with 32 cores averaged 121 FPS. Now, I could not find any data for the M2 Max with 30 cores. Apple only sampled its highest end systems to reviewers. However, as I've shown, knowing the GPU is running 8% faster than last gen and has 6% fewer cores, I expect the performance to be very similar to the M1 Max with 32 cores and the average to be in the 120s. This is probably the reason why Apple didn't sample that version. The M2 Max with 38 cores averaged 150 FPS and is 25% faster than last generation's 32 core M1 Max. And that makes sense since it has 19% more cores and 8% faster clock speeds. Putting Nvidia's last generation GPUs in the RTX 3060 Ti and the 3070 on the chart, and you can see the M2 Max is just 3% faster than the 3060 Ti while falling far short of the 3070. Next, I put Nvidia's current generation of GPUs in the RTX 4060 Ti and 4070 on the chart. The M2 Max is within 3% of the 4060 Ti and is well behind the 4070. Adding AMD's RX 6000 GPUs, and you can see it is 10% faster than the RX 6700 XT, while being 15% slower than the 6800 non-XT. And at the time of this video, AMD has yet to release the RX 7700 and 7800 GPUs. Latest rumor is that it will occur in the September to October timeframe. Finally, the top-of-the-line Intel Arc A770 averages 121 FPS and is like the M2 Max. And when comparing the M2 Max GPU, one thing is clear. The level of performance you get with the 38-core GPU is similar to AMD and NVIDIA GPUs that are priced at about $400 or less. Moving on to the big boy in the M2 Ultra, 
Just like the M2 Max comes in two configurations, the M2 Ultra is just two M2 Max chips, and the M2 Ultra also comes in two configurations. The entry level one comes with 60 GPU cores, and the upgraded one with 76 GPU cores. They both have the same CPU, which is 24 cores, that's 16 performance plus 8 efficiency, and that is double the M2 Max, and the performance also roughly doubles. The CPU score is just under 29,000 in Cinebench R23 and is comparable to a Ryzen 9 7900X or Intel's i7-13700K. Next, with the GPUs and starting with last generation M1 Ultra GPUs, you can see that the 48 core version averaged 176 FPS and the 64 core version averaged 212 FPS. And again, I don't have any data for the M2 Ultra with 60 GPU cores. Apple only samples the highest end systems. However, using the same reasoning as before, I expect the M2 Ultra with 60 cores to be in the same ballpark, if not slightly better than the M1 Ultra with 64 cores, but expect it to be single digit performance better. Now the M2 Ultra with 76 cores is able to achieve 276 FPS, and this is a 30% improvement and is explained by the increase in cores along with the increase in clock speeds. Adding NVIDIA's last generation of GPUs in the RTX 3080 and 3090 on a chart, and you can see that the M2 Ultra is 11% faster than the 3090 and 22% faster than the 3080. With NVIDIA's current generation in the 4070 Ti and 4080, the M2 Ultra is 11% faster than a 4070 Ti, but 20% slower than the 4080. The M2 Ultra with 76 cores is faster than any of AMD's RX 6000 series of GPUs, as the high-end 6950 XT only achieves 243 FPS, and are not shown here to keep the chart simple. Adding this generation of AMD GPUs, and you can see the M2 Ultra is only 4% better than the RX 7900 XT, and when compared to the 7900 XTX, the M2 Ultra is 20% slower. So the M2 Ultra with 76 cores is slightly better than a 7900 XT, but surely not as good as an 80 series class of GPU from NVIDIA in the 4080 or AMD's 7900 XTX. To get that M2 Ultra with the highest end GPU, it will add an additional $1,000 and in total cost $5,000 for the desktop Mac Studio. To a PC person, that price sounds ridiculous. Why would anyone pay that much money for that level of performance? I mean, I could easily build an i9-13900K with a 4090 for less money. And I have often struggled with this in the past until you ask yourself the question, who did Apple build this machine for? The target market for the Mac Studio is in its name. They are targeting studios. Studios that make money. Studios that employ people. Studios that pay rent, have cameras, lenses, and other gear that just dwarf the cost of the computer itself. And businesses and enterprise customers typically pay twice the price for their computers versus their retail counterpart. And these studios view these computers as a tool. And it's just a tax write-off. It's just an expense that they write off. Another way to think of it is, workstations are always much more expensive than PC desktops with similar specs and performance. And you have the same situation here. Apple prices all of their Macs that have a Pro, Max, or Ultra designation to be like workstations since they are targeted for businesses. So while they may look all small and cute, they are not targeted to general consumers who want a computer. And once you wrap your head around that idea that these Macs are priced like workstations and not PCs, only then does the high pricing start to make a little bit of sense. By the way, if you like videos like these, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you are impressed with how far Apple has come with their Apple Silicon since they announced their transition back in 2020. And that, in the end, is the cruel joke Apple plays on Mac users every time Apple teases gaming on a Mac. They have enough money to make it happen, and yet, they don't spend any of it on game developers. They won't fund the developers to get the top 100 games ported over? Apple is making no commitment to gaming. The sad reality is gaming on a Mac will never get any better than it was on Intel Macs. When you could just use Boot Camp to boot into Windows and just run your games natively without any translations to slow down performance, it was never so easy to game on that classic Mac Pro. And even if you forget about the lack of games available, the price for the Mac for the level of gaming performance you get is very mediocre. 
Earlier, I showed the M2 Max provides a CPU that gives you a Ryzen 7 5800X levels of performance and a GPU that is like a 4060 Ti in performance. And that M2 Max in the Desktop Max Studio will cost $2,200. And for the highest end GPU in the M2 Ultra that costs $5,000, you will get a CPU that performs like a Ryzen 9 7900X along with a GPU that is like an RX 7900 XT. Why get a Mac for gaming when you can get comparable performance with a PC for less than half the price? As long as Apple continues to charge enterprise levels of money for a desktop Mac, it will never make any sense for the average person to buy a Mac for gaming. Even if you look at less expensive Macs, like this Mac Mini, I showed previously the high-end M2 Pro with 19 GPU cores costs $1,600 and it is only giving you RTX 3050 levels of performance. To watch that M2 Pro GPU comparison or comparisons with the MacBook Pro lineup, click here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.